Um, Biggie or Tupac? <sighs> Biggie. Ooh, are oh, you a New Yorker? You a New Yorker at heart. Right? <laughs> okay, um, Wayne or Drake? Mmm. Woo! Those, those mixed. I had to bring the smoke today. Oh I had God. to bring the smoke for sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. <sighs> Sorry, Drake. I gotta go. Wow, I would have chose Drake. That's know, crazy. Drake, Drake, Drake's the goat, but it's just like, you gotta realize. 2000, I graduated high school in 2006. Okay. You got what I'm saying? I'm in so high school. So you were in the, you, the you lived out the Wayne, Wayne era. Drake may say the same thing about Wayne. Like, right. That, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's, that's his big bro. So yeah. Okay, shout, cool. Shout out to Weezy. Science says only 8% of people achieve their goals. What makes some people successful and others stay stagnant? How do we identify the qualities and skills necessary to elevate our lives? Well, that's what I want to talk about. That's what my energy is all about. My goal is to help inspire people to be their best selves. These conversations will help people identify their best qualities, bring them out, and understand how to develop plans to achieve their goals. I'm Kayla B, and welcome to the Big Boss Energy Podcast. Hey guys, what's up? You know the vibes. We're back with another episode of Big Boss Energy and we got a real boss in the building today. Um, <laughs> this one's going to be lit because we're from the same college town. We actually did not know each other in college, yeah. but shout out to the Rattlers. You know, this is going to be the second lit Rattler that we had. So the HBCU has been doing their thing. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, when we think about the content space, obviously I'm an influencer. As you know, I interview tons of influencers on my platform and I really want to just talk about the market cap. So by 2027, it's estimated that there's going to be about a $48 billion market cap around content and just influencers in that space. So go ahead, introduce my guest today. I really, <laughs> really am excited, but what's up, Anthony? What's good? <laughs> How I'm you good. doing? Thank you for having me. And you are the founder of Breaker. Yeah. So that's a really dope app. Um, and I'm going to let you explain to the, yeah, to the audience about it. But, um, you know, I definitely just want to get into it. But, you know, as I mentioned, you, you know, Fam, you tally, you mm -hmm. know the vibes. Mm -hmm. So we gonna turn up today. We gonna Come get on, lit. We, lit. We, so, we got in these cups, man. We got. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we gonna keep it cracking today. You know, I know you and your brother started. Unfortunately, he was sick, so he wasn't able to make it today. So if you're yeah. watching this, we miss you. Shout and out we, to Nino Breeze. <laughs> you know, we wish you were here. But um, I want you to just tell the audience kind of how you got into this space because yeah. you're doing some really lit things in the music industry and in this yeah. content creation space. Breaker is definitely breaking ground. You know, you guys have raised. Tons of money. You're at eight million in funding right now. Mm -hmm. And how many years has it been? It's been about two and a half years. Right. So like about a little over 24 yeah. months to yeah. get eight eight million. That's just amazing. So I'd love for you to just tell me yeah. a little bit about no, yourself. Sure, What's going sure. on? Um, to understand breakers, I would. I hate that he's not here. Um, my brother threw tons of parties all around the country uh, okay. with his uh, co-founders Dan Ware, Trey, um, Rotimi. And they just the day like, snatchers. Yeah, the day snatchers. <laughs> uh, and they were just in culture, like you know what I'm saying, very authentically. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, whether it's All Star Weekend, Super Bowl, you kind of name it, they were there, homecomings. And the thing that kept happening was that uh, independent artists and record labels would actually reach out to them as promoters, trying mm -hmm. to get the song played in the club. Okay. And so you know, our phones became you know the search and discovery. Uh, Venmo and Cash App became the escrow system. Excel spreadsheets became how we tracked all sides of the market. And we're like, damn, there got to be a better way to do this shit. Right. And so my brother had hit me one day and he was like, bro. I figured it out. I figured some shit out. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, my whole life, bro, my brother had came up with so many ideas that one of manifesting into society. And like, I always was like, you know, I'm the practical dude. I worked on Wall Street, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan. Yeah. Money, 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 trader, 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 practical, practical, practical. So right. I would always practical his ideas to shreds. And like, I just couldn't on this one. You know what I'm saying? And after he pitched me on it, I, we just haven't put it down since. You know what right. I'm saying? We went on to raise almost like $9 million actually now yeah. um, in funding. We've generated a community that, you know, has generated almost, almost $3 million in like 18 months. Yeah. Um, we work with the biggest record labels on planet Earth, Universal Music Group, Sony, Warner, some of the biggest acts over the past two to three years, we've right. been kind of like that silent force behind the song. Um, and, you know, we learned a lot. And the new technology that we've developed is really a manifestation of all the learnings, right? So we learned, and you can appreciate this as a creator, um, 
takes forever for brands and record labels to pay off. Right. You know what I'm saying? And net 60, that net 90. 60, <laughs> net 90. On Breaker, we kill all that and we just, we, we serve as the financial institution for our influencers. Right. So we bridge that money up front. You know nice. what I'm saying? Um, in terms of search and discovery, sometimes you'll see, you know, particular companies like only going towards the creators that they have on the roster. When the reality is that if you drop in a song in London, you want to tap in with the dopest London influencers. Right. Or if you're trying to push a song in the South, like this, Florida is like, a, and you're from South Florida, you can appreciate this. Florida is one of those regions where you can't go get LA influencers to create buzz around a right. kid. You got to go tap in with the culture right. on the ground. Our technology, we've indexed only almost like 50 million creators. So we can wow. tell you exactly who's, who's moving, there who's moving shit down there. And like, labels have learned to really appreciate that right and so you know and then you know you start working with the labels and then the brands come right and so we just see this whole thing where breaker can serve as like this centerpiece that's getting influencers paid out instantaneously all on technology brands record labels small businesses could tap in plug in reach out to any creator in the world safety on both sides like airbnb for the right. digital space yeah. no for sure that is so dope and so you mentioned you and your brother and he would be the one to always come with the ideas yeah. and so how were you guys like brought up was he like the outgoing one and you were more quiet <laughs> no, reverse, like reverse, really so, okay yeah, so, so yeah so talk talk funny. to us a little yeah, bit about was, the upbringing yeah because yeah. like as a you would think because he was throwing parties that he right. would be the outgoing one i'm the gregarious kind of like outgoing yeah. one he's more like chill behind the scenes quiet um, but like he's very convicted. So like when he sees things, he goes for it. Mm. Um, I'm more so like, all right, that's where we're going. All right, bet. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, and like when you think about Breaker, it's like it's really a manifestation of that Carpe Diem energy, Amir's technology experience, and then my Wall Street experience coming all together. coming together under one right. Way. Yeah. And so like for people who don't know, like Carpe Diem, like when, if you went to school in Tallahassee, so you have like Florida State, you have TCC, you have FAMU. Um, and FAMU was known, like, especially when I was there for like parties, right? Mm -hmm. Like you throw these huge parties. Um, I know I was like an influencer, uh, like not an influencer, but like a promoter yeah. girl in college. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. they have this culture around like the same way girls are getting booked for the club now and stuff. When we were in college, y'all yeah. kind of tapped into that whole yeah. thing with recess and mm -hmm. like all these parties that vibe. became like this vibe. So. It's just so crazy to see how that has manifested and it's spread into something. nationally. Yeah, because like, like when the alumni graduated, they were able to keep track of y'all. Yep. And so y'all would go to New York, LA, mm -hmm. DC, and like when we tapped in, we would go reach out to people like you right. or them. Like I was just yeah. I was behind the scenes, but like Carpe would reach yeah. out to people like you no. and tap in, and then you would be able to activate the DC area, right. and then now DC people know about the brand right. and like. Breaker really does like foundationally sit on that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just came in from like that corporate lens and yeah. was like, all right, how do I take this cultural genius that they possess and really wrap it with structure, wrap it with capital, wrap it with intention, right. wrap it with real people, stakeholders, and we can get into like our investors and everything, but right. I built a, a ecosystem around it. Right. So like, but it, the cultural genius was always there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, for sure. So I want to talk a little bit more about you and your brother's relationship. So you guys, like the, you said you were more of the the outgoing, outgoing one, and yeah. he was quiet, but he's more of like the cerebral. Yeah, you typically see that like manifest. Um, did your parents like influence anything? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, where were you guys raised? Like, yeah, where you we, know, we, like talk we, to yeah, us about yeah, like yeah. the family dynamic because you kept it within the family. Y'all yeah. built this together. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, he couldn't be here today, but I would love to learn about how that dynamic and organic. Um, partnership began yeah, from sure. childhood it's and my, it's my best man in my yeah. wedding. you know he's my best friend um, he is my younger brother so he is professional at annoying me <laughs> um, and I'm obviously super well versed in annoying him back yeah um, and so but the thing is like we're blood you know right. what I'm saying and we come from a very tight-knit family um, I'm a kidney donor right. um, to my mom you know what I'm saying so we grew up like with a very tight unit between my mom, my dad, my sister, and my brother. Strong personalities, so we definitely argue, debate, but that, that debate, I believe, is our X factor. That, yeah. that, that decision in my mom, on my mom's part in particular to say like, yo, speak up for what you believe in. Right. Talk, communicate. If you look at Malcolm Gladwell's book, um, you know, Outliers, it talks about kids that by the time they're five years old that are pushed and not told to shut up right. actually have a better vocabulary, they speak more, they're articulate. And so I just think that the upbringing from my mom and like that pressure cooker environment, right. like you had to get straight A's. 
Right. You had to do it right in school. You had to be honest. You had to have integrity and like. So like when it came to like starting a company with him, it was a no brainer right. because he's cut from the same cloth. cloth. Right. So we're different, but we're similar in the yeah. sense that like I know I can go this way, and I know he's not gonna do no, you know what shit. Yeah behind my back right you know what i'm saying that's my brother yeah and so because you know music you know music will test you, you yeah know what i'm saying entertainment will test you yeah. technology will test you and so just knowing that i'm in it with my brother is like probably one of my greatest professional joys right. you know what i'm saying no matter how difficult it is on the worst day yeah no for sure and does the name breaker did y'all come up with that together he he came up with that he was like did it have a meaning like a special we, meaning or anything i got a oh. So it originally was like BRKR. Okay. Um, that's our actual legal incorporation. Uh, but nah, he had just Breaker, like, because like, we were breaking songs. So right, breaking like, songs. I was break. trying to think of like yeah, what, yeah. It was like Breaker. We wanted to like break records. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, and then it just like, it went from BRKR to like that trademark actually wasn't available. Mm. Um, and we really did want to trademark it. We got a patent for yeah. our escrow system. So like all that legal shit mattered. And so we were like, damn, let's just go breaker, but like yeah. take the E out. That's weak. Yeah. Uh, and then we were like, then we went to the, our, our lawyer, shout out to Perkins Coy, and um, they said it was available. Yeah. And we spent the money and we locked it in. Nice. So when we talk about breaker, like the, the how, I feel like you've explained the software platform, the dynamic mm -hmm. on how you guys actually brought it to life. Mm -hmm. Talk about the timing, mm -hmm. right? Because that's really important. Like when you penetrate a market, like yeah. going to market and understanding when is the right time to bring a product to market. Yeah. So what do you feel like was like, okay, we've done the, you know, the party thing. I have the skill set here. Mm -hmm. Was it more of just like this moment, like, okay, it all clicked? Or was yeah. there a strategic initiative on like, let's bring this to market at a specific yeah. time? Yeah, like I got to give a few shout outs. So like, shout out to my boy, Nate Jones um, from Andreessen Horowitz at the time. I'll come back to why him. Shout out to Mark Byers. Um, he was the GM of Motown at the time. Um, you know, shout out to Mitch K, who was like my first investor. Right. And I, I say those three people, uh, with like a particular lens because that's technology, media, and music, right. you know? And I met them all in various t different times, but they all kind of came together and like believed in us at right. a very specific moment. Right. Um, and a lot of education flowed through those individuals and a lot of capital and access flowed through them. And Breaker really kind of like benefited from that. Right. Even like Ahmed Islam, you know, he runs a company called 1035. That was like that last piece on the brand side. Okay. Um, that's Dan's boss. And so there was just a lot of very important people coming around us at a very specific moment in time saying like, yo, if you look at the Billboard 100, it's very difficult to find a song that didn't go on TikTok or Instagram right. first. And when you look inside of the buildings in terms of like the process around all of this, it's broken. It's very manual. Right. And so like labels want to digitize it, but they don't know how. Right. And they or, or they're just so busy breaking records that they are not focused on, on the, the system right. around it. And so they, that those people came together, validated us in a very insecure moment in our career right. uh, where like we thought that we could do it, right. but we didn't know. Yeah. But you go have a record executive tell you that you can, you're like, all right. Maybe this I makes can. sense, yeah. right? Oh, this is Motown. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or it's like, you know, you have Nate Jones at Andreessen being like, yo, like, I'm going to let y'all into my accelerator program for cultural geniuses. Y'all right. are cultural. I love what y'all are doing at Carpe, right. bringing them in. Toby Wigwe, um, I don't know if you know Toby, um, yeah. but he be, he became like a really big independent artist at the time. He became our co-founder. Oh, wow. And so it was just a lot of validation. Nas came in as an investor. Right. And so the market, everyone was like validating the fact that it started, the market was at $9 billion a year when we started the business. Wow. And it's about to be a $48, to be a 48 billion, billion by, billion by 2027. 2027. So within... Right? What, four years? Four years. Yeah. And so, like, to me... That's, that's an insane growth that's rate ins year over year. Yeah, it's like yeah. 30, 30 to 35% compound in right. annual growth, right? And so the puck was clearly heading that way. Uh, at the same time, Apple went to war with um, Meta, right? And so that created privacy changes. So right. now when you, like, hey, Major allow to track, not yes. to track. So then what happened? Customer acquisition costs started getting way more expensive because right. it was actually more difficult to target people through traditional ads. Exactly. And so then off Gen Z, they want authenticity, authenticity, authenticity. And so paid ads with sponsored on it wasn't as interesting. Right. They wanted to get that organic there. I saw a crazy stat. 52% of kids in Gen Z actually want to be creators. And then about 60 to 70% of them actually will only take advice on purchasing a product or listening to a song 
from, from a creator. It. Right. But then you look at how manual, how many, you're a creator. Right. How many DMs do you get a day? Yeah. How many random emails? There's no centralization. So like when we looked at all of that and we had the validation factors of all these people that were very credible in the space, we were like, bet. Got like, it. Let's go. Yeah. Like, and and so ha- when and you say, back since. yeah, so I want to tap in because TikTok really came you know, I, I don't even know where, <laughs> how long TikTok, I would say TikTok's been around what, under five years, mm-hmm. right? Like, realistically, mm-hmm. I, I got to research that, y'all, yeah, but I would put it, yeah, like in that like five to six year mm-hmm. range. So when we think about this creator economy, it's relatively new, right? Yeah. So it's like a lot of room and opportunity, not only for creators to come in and, and just, yeah, like do what you're doing and there's no regulations really. It's kind of mm-hmm. like you have this full control, but the major part that you mentioned is that connection to brands, that connection mm-hmm. to how do I monetize myself yeah. as an individual yeah. and truly make money or make a career out of this yeah. when I am influencing hundreds of thousands of people yeah. on a daily or getting yeah. people to really buy products. How do you price how it? Do, right. That, yeah. I mean, that is one thing that's like a whole, like negotiations a is such a like, yeah, great area, especially with me. I mean, unless you have some type of direct management, you really are just kind of like, this is what I feel like yeah. I'm worth. Yeah. And this brand is kind of like, well, this is the budget yeah. and you guys are meeting somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Right. And yeah. obviously in all sales, there's negotiations. But I do mm-hmm. think this is a very unique space. Um, so when you think about the creator economy, like how would you explain how you guys viewed it when it started and mm-hmm. where you see it going now? Sure. I think um, any market right. where there's not a lot of data transparency, mm. that's where you see tons of middlemen rise. OK, they benefit from like, yo, actually it's worth X yes. or like, really I can get them for Y. Right. Anytime you have a human playing arbitrage, right. there's always going to be like mismatch. Right. And the problem with black and brown creators is that a lot of the time that middleman really isn't your man's. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? For sure. <laughs> and, and so like, you'll start to see the pricing disparities between white creators versus 100%. black creators. And so what we said was like, you know what? Cause our platform, half of our platform are white creators. Yeah. The half of our platform black. Are, are black and brown. Right. And we don't, we don't, we are a racially agnostic platform. Right. We're for the culture and right. we love the culture. We move culture, but it's, and so like, if that's the case, like how do you design systems that bring parity to everybody? Right. So we built a pricing algorithm that basically sets a minimum that someone has to offer you to even reach out on the platform. Right. Which is so dope from a creator you know standpoint. Yes. So like by time an offer comes from Breaker, We've designed the system such that, like, we've analyzed your growth rate, we've analyzed your regions, we analyze the goal of the brand, right. we systematize a lot of it, and we also leave room for you to be like, nah, more. Yeah. But at least it's coming from a place of respect, where right. it's like, sometimes what I've noticed is like, some, like you know, like we're not a, like an affiliate market right. platform. You know, like they'll send you a link, we'll send you a sweater, and yeah, you post. That's yeah. cool. That's other people can do that. Yeah. We want our influencers getting paid. Right. Period. And so like we just systematize it and like people respect that. Yeah. And they know that we're fair. Right. You know what I'm saying? So do you guys view yourself as an advertising agency in a sense? Or you know what I mean? Oh, because yeah. it's like it's really like they're taking ad budget, if you yeah. think about it, from yeah. these major corporations and then you have an influencer which is like kinda like somebody who's a marketer. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. like how do you categorize that like within the I'm make a, I guess creator economy this space? This is the first <laughs> time I've ever said this on camera and I mean this shit deep to my core. Right. Breaker is the future version of Google AdWords okay. powered by creators. Okay, love that. Meaning the efficiency that you can come in, like type in your goals, say $15,000 spend right. in this type of region with these types of consumers, go like this and come back and get your results. Right. That's the end goal for where we're trying to go. Right. Now I could break you all the ways down, like yeah. how we're gonna get there, what we're gonna do to get there, the foundational pieces, we put in place but i want to have a people powered ad exchange right. my brother wants to have a people powered ad exchange and everything that we do is creating the rails and the infrastructure for that right. so i'm not trying to replace agencies actually we have 20 to 30 of the dopest talent agencies on planet earth on our platform right okay i see Period. what you're saying you get yeah. what i'm saying so it's like the more liquidity that we have right the, the more bigger that you can the scale. network gets right Cause like if you, you you ask a really smart question what's the key function of an ad network the key function of an ad network is liquidity. Mm-hmm. You gotta have liquidity in terms of the marketers. And so for us, it's like, we'll take less 
right. to have more liquidity because right. we know if we can get 2%, 3%, 5% of a 32, 47 billion dollar market, right. you're talking about a, a business that could be worth billions. Right. Right. Yeah, and so sure. in, in many ways, we're really more of a fintech platform with cool tools attached than we are a marketplace for okay. influencers. You know no, what I'm saying? Sure. We, we're solving the payment piece. Right. And that payment piece is what attracts everyone. The labels and the brands don't want to pay you in 90 days. They just have these legacy systems that they that, are, are it's very difficult to mm -hmm. navigate. Like if anyone has navigated with these institutions, they want to pay you. Yeah. They literally just don't. I was in a meeting the other day with a major label. Um, and they were like, we did the whole demo. We're all like proud and excited for our shit. They're like, 85% of why we're about to sign on with you is that fucking wallet. Yeah. <laughs> No, Straight up. More uh, than the, all the other yeah, parts. The yeah. Other, the other 15% is really cool stuff. Right. But like you solving this is everything to right. us. Right. I was like, yo, that's product market fit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For because sure. if that executive feels that way, that means that the rest of them feel that way. Right. And if creators want to get paid instantly and I'm doing that in 140 countries with the click of a button, right. that means that I got millions of people who feel that way. So then it's up to us as technologists to, to create the create logic that, right. and remove all the friction from letting that goal happen. Right. That's a hundred billion dollar company. Right. And you know I love that because obviously I'm in tech. Yeah, so it's like, how saying. do you centralize this process? But it's not necessarily the content creator and the brand. It's like the the heart of the software mm -hmm. that's actually the software's the merging logic. people together. Yeah. You know what I'm it's saying? A, it's, it's, um, it's automation, right? It's, right. Like, it's like we're taking 90% of the manual shit out. So if someone sends you an email, that's a human sending you an right. email. My system is sending that to right. thousands of y'all right. at the click of a button. button right? And that follow-up email, that's a human on them. Right. I'm automating the follow-up. Right. Oh, you accept and it's time to post? That's my app reaching out to right. you. Right. So like the it's more the technology, technology that is moving. It's 170 right. automations. And you're reducing time to time, time to post, budget, budget, everything. Send like yes, to like, manage the process. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we'll get to the point where like we'll take reviews of how people performed. Right. And then we'll use that to inform the recommendation engine. Every time if you come in and say, Hey, I'm an athletic leisure brand, twenty thousand dollars to spend, I'm looking for X amount of creators. I'm studying you the whole way. Right. I'm looking at who you choose, why you chose them. I'm looking at how quickly. So you're they machine respond. learning essentially. It's machine yeah. learning, right? And then we capture all that so unstructured dope. data. We throw it into the cloud, and then we use it to get smarter right. every time. No, you know? that is so dope. Music, music to breaker, right? Music breaker is books to Amazon. Right. So I have one question left before we do something fun and then uh, different. Um, yeah. But I do want to ask, so you mentioned Nas was a, a, <laughs> a original yeah, founder yeah. in Breaker. So no, how did- uh, Investor. Investor, investor yeah. sorry. Um, so how did that whole relationship come about? Or how did you even get plugged to Nas? Because yeah. that's like, that's major <laughs> nah, it was, for like a music, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, Platform I'll business. take it a step further. Like at first, yes, it's major for music. Right. As a Queens kid, it was everything. Right. Because, like, so basically his manager, um, Aunt Soleil, is also an investor in Breaker and is a good friend of mine. Um, I got connected to Aunt through Andreessen Horowitz, my boy Nate that I told okay. you about. Um, and, and basically, man, like, it, he just, me and Aunt hit it off immediately. Right. Like, this guy has been, our first campaign on Breaker, we used to just connect independent artists with influencers. Okay. Our first campaign was Nas. So he wasn't even just our first major right. investor from the no, music No, that's side. major. We broke his KD2. Right. You know what I'm saying? We were part of the marketing right. team. And then, you know, Epic Records saw that. Right. And then we started doing work with Epic. And then it just spun from there. From right. like, every, you name it, we've worked with the label. You know what I'm saying? And just having Nas vouch and then running a campaign with Nas. And then he launched, like another campaign we did that and it was just it all the came perfect together. alignment yep. like and then i finally got to meet him um super quickly in um la at yeah. the uh, united masters event he was there ben horowitz was there um it was just like full circle for me right. and for me they probably don't even know me for real yeah like, like they may know breaker they don't know me yeah because I'm, like, I'm a behind the scenes dude but i'm coming and right. like people know that we're coming right. and, like if you know you know yeah and um Nas, I grew up on ill mat. Like, what, yeah. I got a crazy story about Nas. So my brother wrote an essay. Okay. Um, when he tried to get into the coding boot camp, it okay. was called. Uh, it was like illmatic, like techmatic. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So he called it techmatic. Everything ill, iller than ill. Yeah. He, really liked, he was like everything tech, tech than tech. Like software's eating the world, and he wrote a really compelling essay. 
Nas funded his scholarship to learn how to code. Wow. Before this Before all, so a break it's this like six the, years ago. That's the three sixty moment. God, right? That's like, a three sixty moment. Literally six. And, and when we finally met, and we were on the phone with him, and he was like, "Get out of here. here, bro." No. So like, Ant and I like had always like we had you know we managed this kid Charlie on a Friday. He had gotten two gold records. Like he got signed to like UMG and everything yeah. like that. I, I was just so proud of the kid. But then I'm like, "Yo, the Ant." I'm like, "Yo, Ant, look at me." And like he just. He just sees us growing and he always saw us from day one. Right. So that's my Nas story. Shout yeah. out to Ant. Shout out to Nas. Um, you guys this believe in awesome. us. You, y'all right. believing in us is the whole thing that kind of got the industry focused on us. You know what I'm saying? And like every day we just try to make them proud. No, I love that. I love the alignment. I love how everything like orchestrated itself so organically. Yeah. That's just so dope. So congratulations yeah. Thank you so much, man. on Appreciate everything. Um, and I wish you guys more success. Thank Obviously, you. I might have to go ahead and sign up. There you go. Hey, come on, <laughs> I'm going to drop the link for sure in yeah. my um, in the description of the episode. So if you are influenced out there, I don't know how it works, but I'm sure no, people just go to it. Go to breaker.app, yeah. B-R-E-A-K-R dot app. And then sign up and holla at me. Or you can hit me on TBII underscore nine or Music Breaker. No, you at the end on Instagram. Yeah, no. So I'll definitely get all that information Mm -hmm. from you. Drop it below. So if you're an influencer out there, you're looking to monetize yourself, get more revenue, and definitely connect with major brands or labels, definitely hit up Breaker. But um, I want to do something fun. We've never (laughs) done this. Usually I end on like, what type of advice would you give? But this time I'm like, you've dropped so many gems that I really want to do something fun this time. So, all right, here we go. go. We're going to do this or that, y'all. So we're going to do a quick game, speed round, okay? Okay. So, okay, and it's no shade to nobody or anything. (laughs) We just want to know how y'all feeling over there. (laughs) But okay, so, right, no, no, okay. (laughs) So... Spotify or Apple Music? Spotify. Okay. Why? Uh, I like the UX and I like their artist um, portal. Okay, dope. Um, Rolling Loud or Afro Nation? Uh, Rolling Loud. Okay. Our first competition that we ran as a business was with, with Rolling Loud. Okay. So shout out to Tariq and the boys. Perfect. Nas or Jay-Z? Ooh, that's I got it. Right away. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's, this is a crazy one because I, I'm a loyal guy. <laughs> And I'm from Queens, and Nas, like, he, he's he been looking out, you know what I'm saying? So definitely Nas. Um, okay. But Hove is the GOAT. Like, I got to That's my guy. You got to give props like, to Hove at all times, you know for sure. One day, one day I'm, I'm going to throw it out. I'm going to go to the Rock Nation brunch. If the, if the, if the Rock Nation guys are listening, I'm going to be there. I, okay. lo- I love Hove. Yeah. But no. I got to go Nas. For sure. Okay. Um, 2000 to 2010 hip-hop era or mm. new, like, 2010 to now hip-hop rap oh, era? Oh, definitely 2010 to 2020. Like now, this era? Wait, or so before? Wait, oh, before 2000 to, oh. 20, to 2010 era or to 2010 to now era? Oh, now. Now? now? Yeah. Okay. There's just so much smoke now. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. Um, Biggie or Tupac? <sighs> Biggie. Ooh. Are you a New Yorker? You a New Yorker at heart. Yeah. Right, <laughs> okay. Um, Wayne Tupac, or Drake? Mmm. Woo. Those, those mixed. I had to bring the smoke today. Oh I had God. to bring the smoke for sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Sorry, Drake. I gotta go. Wow, I would have chose Drake. That's know, crazy. Drake, Drake, Drake's the goat. But it's just like you gotta realize. Two thousand. I, I graduated high school in two thousand six. Okay. You get what I'm saying? I'm in so high school. So you were in the. You the you lived out the Wayne, Wayne era. Drake may say the same thing about Wayne. Like, right. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's that's his big bro. So yeah. Okay. Shout, cool. Shout out to Weezy. So are you more of an R&B guy or a hip hop type of guy? All right. I gotta like remember. when you just at home kicking air in your car, what's the vibe? I'm an R&B guy. Oh, that's lit. Now, here's the thing. My sister uh, definitely influenced my brother and I's palate. Okay. She was a hip-hop head and an R&B head. So I'm like listening to Joe and Joe to see. And Donnell Jones. Donnell Jones. Okay. Like, I, Old school vibe. I just grew up on that. And like, it's, so, that, so now my favorite artist is actually Chris Brown. Oh, wow. Yeah. I would say Chris Brown is also one of my favorite artists. His longevity, his creativity. Mm-hmm. Everything yeah. like that's one of my favorite artists special. to this day. He's yeah, special, I always yeah. say that. Um, ooh, fam or Howard? Oh, ah! Come on, <laughs> I had to do it just Ashley to do Fox, it. <laughs> what do you think I'm gonna choose? Bilal, what, are you, what are we choosing here, man? Come on, come okay, on. fam, you <laughs> okay? Instagram or Twitter? I guess we gotta throw threads in there now hey, since we got more platforms, uh, def- but definitely, okay, definitely Instagram. Okay, it's a special place. Um, 
And that's it, actually. Uh, I ain't had no more questions. I got a question for you. What's, I'm, I'm sorry. No, that's cool. I was like, what's she, up? She, Nobody she, ever asked me questions. Right, right, right. No. What, what, what motivates you to do what you do these days? Um, I would say there's like the impact that I'm having on the community right mm -hmm. now. I think um, being an African-American young woman and, you know, like attractive, getting to the bag, I feel like that's constantly misconstrued, especially in the entertainment mm -hmm. industry. It's so over-sexualized and I feel mm -hmm. like I'm in a space with a platform where I could really like influence women to see like you don't have to like be a city girl. No shade to Carisha, please, because you know <laughs> I'm gonna cut Carisha it on. Vibes. I know we, we we got a vibe <laughs> going, but no, like you know I I got my city girl moments. Yeah. Everybody does, and yeah. I respect the culture 100%. But I feel like there's nobody doing this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and the yeah. same way you see like a vision, it's the right time, it's the right moment. I'm just like. Why not now? Why not me? Yeah. And why not Big Boss yeah. Energy? Period. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, everybody so. tap in with her. Her energy <laughs> is pure. What you see is what you get. Um, it's been an honor being on this thing. No, today with thank you. you. I no, love this dope. episode and you congrats dope. on all your success. I appreciate, appreciate you for fam. stopping by the show. Appreciate you, Kip. All right. Woo woo! That was good. That was a great one.